City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light it pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. So we're going to work on the next part in the cardigan jacket, and today it's going to be pockets. And we're going to be putting the pockets, a lining, and the trim all together and get them finished and attached onto our construction project so far. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we have so far is that we have a pocket piece pattern. There's actually two. There's an upper pocket and a lower pocket. And I am only doing the upper pocket um, because I'm only doing a two pocket version of the jacket. But what I need to do, and I've already done it obviously, is cut two pieces in lining and two pieces in my garment fabric. Now on the pocket it says cut here for lining. That's for the Claire Schaefer version. For the Marie version I'm cutting two complete pieces. Okay. Now there's a fold line right here and I have punched those holes to mark on my fabric pieces, not on the lining. So I mark those and I draw a line like this, just so I know very clearly where everything is. With this done, I can fold my piece over at that fold line just so I can get an idea of the final size. And if you look at the pattern itself on her pockets, it looks like the trim is very near the top with just maybe a quarter inch or so above the trim. So that's what I'm going to aim for. So <clears throat> I got my piece of trim that I mentioned in the, like the first video. And I'm just going to place it where I think it's going to look nice. And just look at it for a while, make sure. Because honestly, this is your own thing. And if you wanted it at the bottom, you could probably do that. I'm going to try to, to match it up. And I think that that looks good. So I'm going to need to sew this on before I actually do anything else with the pocket. But this is a very thick piece of braid and I don't want it to be moving. So I'm actually going to do a little cheat and uh, fuse it on first before I stitch it just to make sure it's not going to want to bunch up or anything as I'm sewing. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually iron my trim by itself to flatten it out and to make sure that it can be ironed so that at this stage if I was to iron it and part of it was to melt or get damaged or something I would learn a lesson but it wouldn't be nearly as bad as you know attaching it to my fabric and then doing it so it looks like it's fine it's nice and flat now so with these two trim pieces pressed what I'm going to do is take my fusible bond stitch witchery stuff and um, mine is half an inch wide and I don't want it to peek out of the sides and if you see when I lay it there it's too wide so I'm actually going to trim it in half so I end up with a piece that's a quarter inch wide so just to make sure everything is exactly as I want because the same spacing I'm making this from the edge here will carry over and be the same spacing along the edge of the jacket. So I want to get a good idea of where I am so that I can can copy that exactly. And it looks like if I draw a line half an inch in from that fold line and I center my trim on that line, it's going to give me the spacing I want. So that's what I'm going to do right there. Let's see. 
And again, heat erasable pins, they're going to disappear. So now I have my fusing line there and I'm going to place my stitch witchery right on top of it and find the right side of my trim and place it right on top of that. And you know what? I'm just going to iron the whole thing. My fold line will disappear, but that's okay. I can redraw it. And the main reason I wanted it on there is so that I could get this placement. I'm going to flip this upside down and fuse it again from the back. Let that cool down for a moment. But it is on there well enough. I'm not going to yank it because if I yank it, it will come off. But it is on there well enough that I can stitch it now and not worry about it shifting as I sew. All right, so now I have decided I'm actually going to stitch this on by hand rather than run it by machine. I'm thinking if I ran a machine stitch down here, it would be obvious. You know, I don't think I would want that straight row of stitching on there. So what I'm going to do is actually, it's, it's going to go fairly quickly. I am just going to come in and where my big white tape part is on my braid, I'm just going to take a couple stitches. So like there's two stitches on this side and then I'm going to come up over here and grab it on this side and take a couple just little felling stitches. So basically all you're seeing on the outside is just a little tick mark and uh, just going to do two of those little stitches for each curve of the white tape just like that. This is stitched on. I'm not trimming the ends yet but um, just reminding that my pocket piece I fused a very light uh, fusible interfacing to the entire piece of all of my pieces actually before I got started so make sure that your pocket is stabilized with something if you haven't done that already. So what I'm going to do now is sew the top part of my lining to my pocket and I'm just sewing it at the top and I'm actually going to take a fairly narrow seam allowance. I'm going to do a 3 8 inch seam allowance up here and I need to leave an opening in the middle you know, it doesn't have to be exact, but wide enough that I can flip everything right side out through it. And because I have so much thick fabric and trim, I'm actually making it a couple inches wide. So I'm only going to be sewing, you know, an inch or so on this side and an inch or so on that side for right now. All right, so I've got this sewn on here and I have my opening right there. So now what I need to do is mark this fold line right here on the back side. All right. Before it was on the front, actually it's on the front again here, but it needs to be on the back here so that's where you can see it. And it's good to actually draw that in so you can double check that your trim is straight at this point because this is your chance to fix that. So um, before I actually do anything else, I need to press the seam allowances open on this. So I'm going to need to press it like that so that this is easy access right there. So let me go ahead and press these open. Okay, just move one out of the way here. So now I have this pressed open. What I need to do is fold it on that fold line, nice and flat, lining up my lining, which will be longer. That will be trimmed off eventually. And get everything nice and flat here and go ahead and pin it. First, I'm going to actually pin it up here near the top to keep it from wanting to unfold on me. I'm going to draw my 5 inch, 5 8 inch stitching line on the bottom because sometimes when you're heading this way and you need to make a turn, it's easy to miss that. But this is how I'm going to sew it. Um, starting up here, go all the way down, over and back up, nice and even. All right, I just wanted to show you something really quick. Um, this is very thick up here and then it steps very far down. And sometimes that can be tricky. So I'm using a little tool. See how it just goes jolt straight down there. There's two different heights to this. 
it's just a little point turner thing. Um, this one over here is very dirty. It's thicker and this is thinner. This is like a sixteenth of an inch. This is about an eighth of an inch. I'm actually going to put the thicker one here. And it's just so that my foot can go straight over that gap without angling down sharply because I don't want to skip any stitches. Once I'm pretty clear, I can lift my presser foot up and then put it back down. Make sure I get to my corner. And as I get closer up here, I'm going to be doing the same thing. So I'm getting to the point where I have to take that big step up. So I'm going to lift up my presser foot, stick my little tool in there, put it back down. I should have had my needle down. That was a, I'm still in the right place though, so I'm okay. But do it with your needle down is a better clue. And then I can go straight over. Alrighty, so now I need to do a lot of trimming. Oh, my variety of scissors. So I'm going to trim my trim. I'm just going to take it off at the edge right now because of all of the basting and stuff I have on there. Okay. I'm going to round off these corners and take off this extra lining so that doesn't confuse my issues. Using my pinking shears I am going to trim it down. On the instructions it said 3 8 you know I might do it a little bit less. I might do closer to a quarter inch. Take in my top corners here to try to remove some of that bulk. I'm going to take off this little chunk here. All right, now using the opening that we left open, very carefully turn everything right side out. Get my favorite little metal chopstick. which is excellent at pushing out corners and since it's just round at the top it doesn't want to punch through anything. Okay, there's my little pocket. I'm going to go ahead and press that really quickly. Alright, so here's my little pocket right now. So before I go any further I need to do a little hand needle work in the back. First thing I need to do is close this up. So I'm just going to again and invisibly or inconspicuously as possible but without freaking out because honestly who is looking inside of your pocket you know. I want to make sure as I'm sewing that I am trying to actually snug up my lining a little bit so it's going to want to be slightly smaller than my uh, outside fabric. All right and see how when I was pressing it I tried to kind of roll it in so what I'm actually doing is coming in and instead of just picking one or two little threads at the end, I'm coming in about an eighth of an inch and grabbing them. And what that's going to do is just cinch it up ever so slightly and inconspicuously up here, but it'll be enough to tweak it up down there. So let me go ahead and finish this across the top. And when I get to the end, I'm just going to take a couple stitches in place make one crosswise to bury it. I find that when you make stitches in two different directions it locks it in better. Okay, so I've got this tidied up. This has been cinched up but now the sides still need a little something so that they will also have that lining not in danger of showing. So 
instead of um, you know taking in there's there's been there's different ways you can do like a little ladder stitch thing in the middle and that'll tweak it and stuff what I'm actually going to do is just kind of roll it in with my fingers and make a tiny little running stitch along the inside here just to hold it in place all right so I have both my little pockets all sewn up and ready to place and it's time to uh, position them I am sewing them on now because it's easier for me to do it now in the Claire Schaefer method she waits until later and puts them on by hand after everything is done and lined and have to be very careful when your hands sewing it that it doesn't show through the lining and all that to me it's easier to do it now so I want my bottom of my pocket to be just above the finished edge like we can see here on theirs. There's the end of their pocket. There's the finished edge. To me, that looks like maybe half an inch. Okay. And if I'm using a 5 8 inch seam allowance, I am going to, again, drawing lines because I do. If it's a 5 8 seam allowance and half an inch above, I am going to draw a line at 1 and an eighth inch pocket here along this bottom edge here just to get an idea of see how I have to kind of keep rotating it because this bottom edge is not perfectly flat it's a little bit curvy but that's because we've worked so much curve into it now on my front piece this little circle here that is on the quilting line I believe is supposed to be the top placement or a a, uh, a pocket placement now because I shortened mine and everything I'm not using their placement exactly but it's a guideline so I marked where that was on the bottom edge and I'm just going to play with if I make this the edge how would that look All right so let me move it down here a bit you can see it's overlapping this seam, which is, you know, well, it's hard to tell on hers, but that princess seam is right there. So it is placed in the same general area. And I think it's going to be fine. So that's how I'm going to come up with my position by guidelining it off the bottom and everything. So I've got them pinned on, and what I'm going to take care of now is basting them in place. All right? And I'm using a blue thread so that hopefully my basting stitches will show up and I won't forget they're there. And in this thick part up here, I'm just stabbing it up and down because it's thick. But I'm probably basting about three-eighths, between a quarter and three-eighths of an inch in. And I'm just going to take some very wide stitches just to hold it in place all the way around and uh, just like that. I have these basted in place and um, pressed them so my marks are gone now and I was trying to decide if I was going to sew them on by hand or by machine. So what I did is I did a test run of using the thread I would use on my fabric to see how obvious it would look and you know what I think that those stitches blended in so well they're almost invisible so I'm going to go ahead and sew these on by machine um, but I'm going to use a special foot to try to keep my stitching exactly uh, where I want it on the outside edge all right so over here at my sewing machine and I'm going to take off my standard foot the one that I'm going to be using is this one it's got a little spring-loaded blade type thing right here which is really good for guiding the edge on things so let me show you how that works I'm gonna screw it on here my machine's pretty cool because it has a high shank so industrial feet work on it so that's nice while I was basting my pocket on I had to double check and make sure that I was basting my seam allowance open so now I don't have to worry about that but anyway on my foot this little blade 
I'm going to position it so it's right next to the pocket edge. So I'm not sure if you can see, but this little blade here, it's running just on the outside edge of the pocket. So now I'm going to need to do a little lifting and everything to get over my trim here. So now that I'm over the, over the hump, over the trim, I can just let it run and that blade is going to keep it at the edge. I can get down to the bottom, make sure it's in the right spot, turn it. When I set it down, that blade's going to pick up right where it left off at the edge. And I'm getting up to that thick part there. So even though I have that special foot, I'm going to use my little tool, put my needle down. my wide end in there and I can still see the gap in my plastic thing is wide enough I can still see the edge. And going this slow it may look like it's taking forever but it's still a whole lot faster than hand sewing it and I believe it's going to be stronger too. Alright so I'm just going to go straight off the edge and not backstitch and pull all those threads off. So now I'm going to go ahead and try to carefully pull out my basting stitches. So my basting stitches are out and there's my pocket. I'm going to press it one more time just to make sure everything is set in there. But I think it looks pretty cute. So I'm going to push the thread through the top of the needle and push it straight down into my fabric. I'm using, definitely using a thimble because this is a very thick, thick corner up here. All right, so I've pulled my needle off and I've got my two threads here. Just to show you how, if you feel like one little wrap is not strong enough, you can make two if you want to. You know, one is strong enough, so I'm not going to worry about it. I take the point of my needle through that loop, point it where I want that knot to go, and just pull my threads, and it's going to secure it right at the base of that needle. Tug it tight and clip it. So they're all no loose ends up here, no ugly back stitching showing, and it's all nice and secure in the back. And that does it for today. I'm very happy with these little pockets. I think that they are adorable. I think the placement is good and I am happy with the way that the stitching just kind of blends in on there. And so I'm just going to stick this up on the mannequin so that it can maintain its curviness. And I'll see you next time.